Hi, welcome to Fire Engineering Training Minutes. I'm Nick Martin, and today we're going to talk about some uh, features of wearing your radio underneath your coat and how the PPE interacts with that. So let's talk first about why we want to wear the radio underneath our coat. Um, some guys wear it over top of the coat. That exposes the radio to a lot of different elements. I know there's new radios out there these days they are supposed to be better at this, and they're not susceptible to that. I don't leave that to chance. When we have our radio over top of our coat, not only is it swinging and inhibiting our movements, it's also an entanglement hazard, it's exposed to high heat, and it's exposed to water damage. And all of those things can cause it to malfunction. We have to realize the failure points on our radios. Even in some of our newer radios, the radio itself, the speaker mic, they may be heat rated, they may be intended for firefighters, but we find a common fail point here. There's several fires that have happened, the guys have gotten caught in a bad spot, this wiring melts and it can obviously disable their radio, but it also can cause shorts in the radio that with these digital radio systems can make everything go crazy and set off emergency identifiers and lock down the radio channel and really cause a lot of chaos on the fire ground. So for a lot of reasons, we often want to be wearing the radio underneath the coat. So to set ourselves up for that, there's a couple things we want to do. On the technical end of things, there are some things with features we can send up on many of today's radios to make this very user friendly. One is something as simple as a keypad lock. A lot of these radios have these little keypads on here to do all the doohickeys and features. When you're wearing it on your side and you're bumping into things, those buttons get pressed and they take you into menus and they change things on the radio or they cause the radio to honk out. By simply enabling a keypad lock, where you can disable those buttons unless you flip the switch, we can prevent a lot of that while we're in the fire building. The other has to do with the setup of our radio channels. Generally, most brand radios have 16 channels on a bank. So if you set up, say, channel 1 and 16 on a channel that'll always get somebody's attention, that can make it easy for somebody in a mayday situation to rapidly get in contact with somebody. What I mean by that is, say if channel 1 is dispatch, and somebody's always going to hear a dispatch, well, I know if I spin my button all the way to one way to this side, I'm on dispatch. Well, in a bad situation, what if I spin it all the way to the other way? If 16 is also dispatch, that might seem like a waste of radio channel, but that means no matter which way I spin this dial until it stops, I'm going to be on a channel where somebody is going to hear me right away. So a couple setup things there. Laying out our PPE. I got my PPE laid out here on the side of the rig like uh, before the call comes in and I've laid it out in a manner that's going to make it efficient for me to get dressed. So I've already put my pants on here. You notice I got my hood on the top here. I want to put my hood on first, okay? When I put my hood on first and then I put my radio on, now my radio is going to sit on top of this hood. If you compare that to if I put my radio on first and then my hood, I'm going to have something like this and then I'm going to have to work my microphone out from that and that has a tendency to cause a break in the PPE, however small, that can make a certain area of your body susceptible to heat and cause you to get a burn injury or, or delay your operations. So now once I've got this on with my strap over my coat or strap over my hood, I can go ahead and throw my coat on. You notice I leave my hood up while I'm putting my coat on so it doesn't get stuck underneath my coat. I go ahead and secure, zipper my coat up. Now I generally I want to bring this mic out. You can see it's getting covered here. Some guys just wear it like this. That looks really cool. It also means that you have about a third of your chest exposed to the fire environment. So I want to bring that out. Most coats come with some kind of tab here, a fixed tab. That's fine. I, I bought this little retractable thing here so I can bring my mic out and I can secure it on my tab, which means I can zip my coat up fully, right? I can close my flaps. I can do my I can do my velcro. So I can have my PPE fully secured, have my mic right out here where I can get a good ear on it, which means I don't have to keep it at full volume all the time. Generally, if I tilt my face over, this is right here at the speaking port on my SCBA. And if I do need to bring this out to talk on it, then I've got a nice retractable thing so I don't end up with this microphone coming out and hanging down here where I can't hear it. It's an entanglement hazard. It's knocking around and keying up and ruining the radio channel. As far as operating our radio, we do need to maintain good practice with our dexterity on our gloves. I need to be able to control the basic features of this radio while I'm wearing my firefighting gloves. That comes only through practice, okay? You notice I have my radio here, so it's just inside my coat, okay? I have the height adjusted, so the lip of my coat here comes just to the top of the radio, all right? So when I need to adjust something, I know where my buttons are, okay? I know that this backmost knob here is my volume. I can kind of put my thumb on it, 
and just roll that as needed to adjust the volume. And if I need to adjust my channel, I know that's the one between the antenna and the other knob. And I can get my fingers on there and roll that knob and count the clicks. When I count the clicks, I know what channel I'm going to. I should have I memorized what channels are in where on here, right? We talked about channel 1 and 16 being able to get to somebody. A great feature on a lot of these radios these days, too, is voice tags. So when I roll this over, it says TAC 3, TAC 4, or whatever, and I get a verbal confirmation of what that is. So communications are essential on any fire ground. Radios are an essential part of communication. You know, any little hiccups in there can cause a lot of head headaches for the whole fire ground. So just a couple little setup tips to get our radio right to make sure we get good fire ground communication. Thanks for watching Fire Engineering Training Minutes. I'm Nick Martin.